can't be ours doing this video at all. It's about Argo blockchain. If you can be bothered to watch it, stay tuned. <laughs> What's the crack everyone? Welcome back to Buy Hotel. I hope of course you're all well and I always try to do something different in the intros. I thought I'd just do a real boring one. Uh, so there you go. This video, quick update on the RNS that came out for Argo Blockchain. So the mining margin of 71% for February and January, uh, 74%. We said in the last time it was a wee bit lower than what we're used to. We're usually, you know, in the 80s, a bit lower. The company owns 2,685 Bitcoin, of which 246 were BTC equivalents. Just the 172 Bitcoin mined that uh, period then. So a bit disappointing, but we've got reasons. Obviously, you know, that's a number that we were ho hoping to be higher. Uh, it's lower for a couple different reasons. The first is uh, we had significant curtailment in Quebec, um, and also actually at the core facility in, in North Dakota, we have some machines there. Some of our newer S19s are there, um, but, but we also had significant curtailment in Quebec be because of cold weather. So um, I think those of you that are from North America, particularly the eastern part of North America, know that it's been an unusually cold winter. That has meant that we have had to give some of that power back um, to you know the, the local utilities, both at Mirabel and at Bay Como. That's part of the agreement that we have. That's how can we get low cost power for the rest of the year. Um, but it does mean that particularly in the you know winter months like January, February, um, we are subject to curtailment. Um, the, the good news is, is that curtailment is mostly over. We're now moving you know, into warmer weather. Uh, and so the, our expectations is, is that we're going to be able to run machines full time. It's also good news in the sense that it's what we've said you know, Bitcoin mining is good for. It's flexible load. We're able to give power back to the grid in times of, of uh, high demand and bring up the base load uh, for the grid for the rest of, rest of the year. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing for the grid. It makes it more stable. It makes it more resilient. It's certainly why you're seeing lots of Bitcoin mining going on in Texas and, and more and more because the competitive grid there allows you to, to essentially be economically incentivized to give power back to the grid. So I'm content with that. If you look at Peter, you know, he's got good eye contact with the camera. He's not shifty. He's not looking away. Fully believe everything that he is doing. As a shareholder, I don't feel that Argo or Peter have let me down. So I'm content with the reasoning behind that. Trust in the process and all of that jazz. I like the fact that he says we're pulling the lever as and when we need cash. I've done several videos prior that you might want to go in and check out about how they're going to fund the Texas site and I'll share the video to that Texas site how much the factory or plant may cost. The other option that I'm also in favor of was the Bitcoin loan. I think either of those would be acceptable. Anything other than dilution is what we're looking for here. So I'm content with that as well. We have the first and second generators on site now, which is good. There's a video again on the Argo blockchain website of the first generator going in. Pictures within this video here of the second generator on site and he does confirm that the third, fourth generators are being placed, the orders there to go in um, in the following year, which is great, good supply chain all being lined up. Everything looks to be going tickety-boo. We haven't really had any issues in terms of site progress as yet, and site progress is very good. We have a recent appointment of Agrava Chopra as an independent non-executive director. Continued progress with the construction of the Helios site and the supply arrangement we have signed with these are testament to the fact that we are on the right track to achieving our goals of this year. And I like that they repeatedly keep saying we're in progress to achieving our goals. Things like we have led the foundations for executing our growth strategy for 2022. So there's nothing here that I'm worried about in terms of a long-term shareholder. He's also given us an update on that exciting deal with Intel, which I'll share here. Uh, I think most of you are aware on February 11th, we put out a tweet saying that we were one of Intel's first customers for their new blockchain accelerator. The, the details of that deal are, are not public yet, and that's due to the confidentiality clauses in the agreement that we have with Intel. Uh, we're going at their pace in terms of what we can disclose, um, but we're happy to put it into this RNS, get a little bit more information out. Uh, the, the accelerator is chips, um, and, uh, and those chips will be coming to us in the second half of this year. We were selected, um, and selected is the right word. We were chosen as one of Intel's clients because of our, of our ESG bona fides. Uh, all of the work that we've done in, in being a leader on the ESG side of things uh, was very attractive to them. That's an important part of their work in, in the blockchain space. If you read some of the, uh, or that one kind of blog article that they put out, uh, it's very clear that that's an important part for them uh, in their considerations about how they're going to develop, um, you know, computing power in, into the future for, for blockchain um, technologies. Um, the other thing that is important is that we have pro rata rights um, as part of the agreement. So that means that, you know, we get a certain guaranteed supply of, of the Intel units that are coming out into, into the future, um, which is significant for us. The one other thing I should say is that one of the other kind of key pieces that was important to Intel as they were you know, talking to us before we supplied, uh, signed the agreement was our experience in, in, in mining. Well, that sounds very exciting with the Intel deal. I like that we were chosen aspect that he added there. And you go into my previous video here, you can see that I did this on the February the 16th for a bit more of a, the rumbles about that. You can, and again, I'll, I'll share the link to that video. So let's just see how we've performed since then. We have went down 20, 3% pretty much on the ARBK ticker symbol that's the NASDAQ and we are down it by 16% on the LSE ARB ticker symbol so one hell of a given uh, which we're used to 
not worried at all. I mean, we can see the Bitcoin's down. We did get a bit of a jump on the jump the Bitcoin got, obviously, as well. But look, it's not a, an issue for me as a long-term shareholder. I'm, I'm not bothered by this. I know how the general market is. There's so much chaos, Ukraine. But people are messaging going, well, you're forgetting about Argo and my update videos and stuff. I'm just not covering Argo because there's not a lot happening in my Argo. Argo's a long hold, I haven't lost any conviction. I'm still very, very bullish. I think everything he's talking about is very, very good. We're waiting on the site to open. It's just a long hold, guys. Same with ABML, same with all the stocks we talk cover on this channel. They're all 20, 30 plays. These are, these are long holds for me. I update everybody in my Discord. If you're interested in joining the Discord, by all means, click the link down below and you'll get a far more update um, on Argo on the regular. But in terms of, of doing YouTube videos, I don't see the point. We're talking about the winners, you know, the Glencore, the 125% rise we got last week. Albertsons, we got like 30% out of that in two days. If anyone's interested in actually winning stocks, get into the Discord, get into the trading course, you can do these types of things. But in terms of Argo, just sit back, relax, try to enjoy the gaping that is there and take advantage of these prices in and around 60p. Let's have a look at some of the charts. We have just consistently went down. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. We can see that every time we've kind of fell below our body drum bands, we've got a nice little jump. But if I'm looking at this chart, I'm going, well, where, where do I foresee this going? Well, it doesn't look good. None of our indicators look good. We're, they're not massively oversold either. So it's not even a time where I'd be going, oh, let's get the balls deep into it. I'm just sitting it out. It's not a rush. No need to race. Either I wait for said reversal or I wait for it to get to more of an attractive price right now. It's at the lower end. It wouldn't be a terrible time to open the position. I know people say to me, why would you open a position if you think it's going to go down? You can never time these things. I am considerably in Argo blockchain. I'm holding with you all, taking the pain. So I don't see the point in topping up needlessly. I always try and time my buys. And right now, I'm content just to sit this out. And if we go to our London Stock Exchange, again, below all our averages. So we drew this level at ADP, and now it looks to be a decent level of support. So I actually topped up a bit today on the ARB. Now, why are the ticker symbols different? Because they're different. They're just different exchanges, different exchange rates, all of the stuff all together. So at 60p, I had me some of that. I last topped up at 80, we drew that, and I last dropped off a pound. I just, just top it up as it goes down. This is great. This is exactly what you want. At the end of the day, Guys, when I was buying Argo Blockchain, I was buying shares at £2.9, getting them at 60p. Getting things at 80% discount. If I wanted a new leather jacket and I went into a store and it was going for £100, and not now, you wouldn't get 100 you wouldn't get a, God, you wouldn't get a leather jacket for £100, especially now with inflation. But say it was £100 and I was going in and it was going for £20, would I run away and go, I don't want it now? No, I'd be buying at least two of them. So that is it. You've got to look at it this way. It is a long-term hold. We do have support in and around this 62p level. So I'm buying again. The next level would be in and around 20p, say 17p. If it falls down as low as that, we just keep on buying. As long as they fundamentally keep improving, I'm content. That is the video. I hope you found it informative. I just want to give a shout out to Pam, who is an Argo blockchain shareholder. I mean, they've been great supporters of the channel. They actually commented on one of the videos I was running the competition on, and they won the trading course. They are in the Discord. Uh, so well done to you again. And if you find yourself getting bogged down with the Argo blockchain or any of your stocks, yeah, check out the video nice. here. If we can see the stocks that we're winning on, you can make a lot of money like the rest of us, and I'll catch you in that video. Peace.